So, uh, I will start my talk. So, today I'd like to talk on the thermal runaway and protection experiment of coated conductors. So, this work was supported by, uh, in part by JSP Mirai program, and also we acknowledge following students in our group for their cooperation to conduct experiments. So, uh, let me start with the uh, explanation of the initiation of the thermal runaway. And the uh, EI characteristic for the critical current is not always uniform along the coded conductors. In other words, uh, there will be a, some intrinsic weak point uh, may exist in a coil. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> uh, furthermore, and um, EI V feather or critical current V feather characteristic and the magnetic field distribution along the coated conductor one intercoil cause the variation in the local EI or critical current and can form weak points. Even if no major voltage appears across the terminal of a coil, local high E at a weak point might cause dual heat generation. And if the local heat generation surpasses cooling, thermal runaway is initiated. So now we focus on conduction cooled magnets. Uh, the initial phase of thermal runaway uh, might be quiet. Due heating and cooling are balanced critically, and the normal voltage might be too small to detect. In such a circumstance, <coughs> our question is, after the appearance of detectable mag magnitude of the uh, terminal voltage, whether we can protect the magnet by the conventional protection scheme using a damp resistor or not? Let me explain the conventional quench detection and protection scheme. Uh, in the magnet, in the usual magnet, uh, like a low DC uh, superconductor magnet, uh, detecting normal voltage, then disconnecting power supply using circuit breaker, and then damping energy using external uh, damp resistor. So the current is decay uh, with a time constant L divided by R. L is the inductance of the coil, and R is uh, dominated by the uh, damp uh, resistance of the damp resistor. This is a conventional uh, current detection and protection scheme. So in, uh, in this scheme, threshold voltage, well, uh, detection voltage uh, of the quench, and also the uh, decay time constant of the current, tau. This is primarily determined by the uh, coil inductance and damp resistor and operating current, and operating temperature uh, determining the uh, protection condition. And, the, and these uh, values determine the success of the protection or not. So <coughs> let's move on to the uh, experimental method uh, using short sample piece uh, instead of expensive coil. Uh, this slide explain, using this slide, I like to explain the simulation of a quench detection and protection of a real magnet uh, using short piece of the coated conductor. So in principle, uh, we like to conduct quench and protection experiment. But of course, in the coils are expensive, so we don't like to burn an expensive coils. So instead, uh, we use a short sample pieces because short sample is a cheap, so when uh, burning out the short sample piece is, uh, uh, is acceptable. Uh, again, this is a uh, circuit of the um, uh, protection circuit of the uh, rear magnet. We simulate uh, this rear magnet using the F FPGA module and power supply and short sample of the coated conductor. An FPGA module enable us monitoring the sample voltage and controlling uh, the output current of a power supply. <laughs> Once the monitor sample voltage reached 
a threshold value, this is simulating a quench detection in a real magnet. <coughs> we wait a certain period. It simulates the time required for quench detection and activation of the circuit breaker. And then decrease the output current of the power supply exponentially. So this simulates the decay of the magnet current by a damp resistor. Well, this is our experimental scheme. Uh, this slide shows you the, uh, our sample. Uh, left figure is a uh, sample. Oops, sorry. You can see the sample coated conductor here. The entire length is about uh, 180 mm from here to here. Uh, this is a, a terminal block uh, connecting to the um, <coughs> current feeder. So this sample is put in this cryostat, and this cryostat is inserted as another uh, superconducting magnet, which uh, using which we can apply the magnetic fuel to this sample. So sample is typically cooled uh, down to the uh, 20K or 15K or something like that. But we control the temperature uh, of the sample, uh, typically 30K uh, in the experiment uh, reported today. And also that we can apply the magnetic field up to 5 tesla. But in uh, today's report, uh, magnetic field is um, up to uh, 2 tesla. <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, arrangement of the voltage tap. So when uh, we uh, attach a series of voltage taps, and this is again the circuit diagram, and this is the typical uh, typical waveform. So in the red trace here is the voltage, entire voltage of the entire sample. So when uh, once a summer runner will occur, then uh, uh, voltage will appear. So in this case. Uh, we detection voltage is set at 100 millivolt, 100 millivolt. So therefore, this timing uh, we can detect the, uh, we can detect the, uh, this normal voltage and wait 0.1 second. This is simulating uh, the time required uh, for the activation of the circuit breaker. Then we exponentially decay uh, the current supply uh, by the power uh, current fed by power supply. So in this case, time constant is set at one second. So then the voltage of the entire sample is decreasing right this way. So uh, uh, this is again the trace of the current and voltage of the uh, various voltage taps. And also here, uh, we show uh, the trace of the hot spot temperature. This is determined from the voltage uh, uh, across uh, these two voltage taps. So in this case, maximum hot spot temperature is about 220K. So uh, our focus in the experiment is first as uh, a hot spot temperature. Uh, this is determined in principle uh, by the temperature dependence of the uh, kappa stabilizer. So this is obtained, uh, obtained temperature trace. This is the red trace. And also, this blue one is a uh, backup uh, measurement by the uh, Senlock uh, 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 type uh, <coughs> temperature sensor. And also, the, uh, another focus is the degradation after thermal runaway or quench. Uh, for this purpose, uh, we measure the VI characteristic of the sample before and after uh, the experiment and quench or thermal runaway. So in this case, uh, you can see here, uh, VI curve before quench, after and after quench is almost completely overlapped. So in this case, there is no degradation. <laughs> so uh, first I'd like to talk on um, the, uh, what is relevant to hot spot temperature. Uh, to study uh, uh, <coughs> this part, uh, we conducted the so-called uh, heater quench experiment. We focus on the relevance of the following elements. The first is a heating, initiating quench or thermal runway, and a critical current, transport current, detection voltage, 
and decay time constant of the current. So in other words, resistance of damp resistor. <coughs> First, heating power of the initiating quench or thermal runaway. We vary and uh, power of the heater initiating quench and then compare uh, the hot spot temperature. So you can see here we vary the heater power from the uh, 3.81 watt to 11.5 watt but you can see here uh, hot spot temperature is almost same in these three conditions. So therefore uh, we can conclude that uh, heating power is not relevant uh, to quench or thermal uh, hot spot temperature uh, in quench or thermal run. And this is uh, uh, naturally understandable because um, hot spot temperature is primarily determined uh, by the dual heating of the superconductor. So, in other words, in principle, current and kappa cross section is an uh, uh, important factor that determines the uh, uh, hot spot temperature. Next, critical current and transport current. So uh, we vary applied magnetic field from 0 0.6 tesla and 2 tesla, then we can change the critical current from 243 amps to 485 amps. This is almost double. But you can see here, uh, hot spot trace of the hot spot temperature is almost same. So that means the critical current is not relevant uh, to the hot spot temperature. On the contrary, uh, if we vary the transport current, hot spot temperatures increase with transport current. So in other words, transport current is relevant uh, to the uh, hot spot temperature. So critical current is not relevant to the hot spot temperature or protection, although it relevant to the initiation of the quench or thermal run. Uh, meanwhile, uh, transport current uh, is relevant uh, to the hot spot temperature because and the dual heating is primarily determined by transport current and copper cross section. So next, uh, detects vo detection voltage and decay time constant of the current. <coughs> So uh, uh, in this plot, in this graph, uh, we plot the hot spot temperature against the detection voltage. So uh, with increasing detection voltage, it's, uh, this is somehow in uh, somehow delay of the detection. So this is naturally, it is natural that the uh, hot spot temperature is increased with increasing threshold voltage. And also this is a time constant. This is also natural with increasing time constant of the current decay, but for temperatures increase. So now we like to move on to the feasibility of the protection again thermal runaway. In the following, we fix the detection voltage and decay time constant of the current. Detection voltage is fixed at 100 mV. And the delay time is fixed at 0 0.1 second. And decay time constant of the current is fixed at 1 second. <coughs> so uh, for the, in the series of experiments, we form a weak point at the sample, uh, sample center by bending. And this is because we like to initiate the quench at the center of the short sample. Otherwise, how uh, we cannot measure, uh, we cannot uh, diagnose the uh, behavior of the uh, thermal, uh, sample behavior uh, during the thermal runway. For this purpose, we bend the sample uh, with a diameter of seven millimeter, then straighten again, the then use this sample uh, for the experiment. So when uh, at the center part, there are some uh, artificial weak point so therefore, a uh, summer runaway should initiate at this point. So this is again the arrangement of the voltage tax. 
So the, I like to show you the scheme of a summer runaway test. We increase the current stepwisely. First, increase the current at this point. So in this case, about 50 amp, 55 amps, maybe. Then wait 300 seconds to see, to look at whether summer runaway occur or not. If not, if we increase the current a little bit stepwisely, then wait 300 seconds once again. Then increasing current again. So in this case, if the current reached 120 amps and wait about 300 seconds, then summer runaway occur. So then uh, we shut down the current power, current of the uh, from the power supply. So then uh, we check the reproducibility and, uh, in the second experiment. Uh, this is a trace of the uh, first is the temperature. So this is a zero. This is again. Uh, this is a somehow two thousand second. So in this case, um, uh, temperature is gradually increasing. Then this point, the summer runaway occur. So these <coughs> these three graph is some enlargement of this period. So red cup is the uh, entire voltage. So then uh, here we can detect the thermal runaway. Then we can we decay the current with a time constant of the one second. So this is again the voltage tab and also post for temperature. So now uh, in this slide, uh, we summarize so-called prote protectable current Again, from a runaway and heat of current. Protectable current is that below that value of the current, we can protect the sample without any degradation. So, uh, in this class, first, uh, uh, I like to explain the uh, light half of the curve. So, uh, let me compare these three bars. This is the same sample, but we vary the applied magnetic field. As a consequence, uh, we can vary the critical current. So in this case, thermal runaway occur at the current of the 115 15 amps. So at this point, uh, at this condition, thermal runaway occur 145 amps. But these two cases, uh, sample didn't degrade uh, after uh, the thermal run. But uh, uh, this case, magnetic field applied magnetic field decreased 0.5 tesla, so summer runway occur at 180 amps. So this is larger uh, these two value. So at this time, after the summer runaway, uh, sample is degraded. So this current with this current, uh, we cannot protect the sample, but we can protect the magnet of this sample. So in this case, protectable current is between 145 and 180 amps. And again, this is a, uh, another sample. This sample is a thermal runaway at 170 amps, so this is degrade. But this sample is a thermal runaway at 125 amps, but this is not degraded. So again, between these barriers, there is some threshold for the protection. So um, uh, as a reference, I'd like to show you the similar data of the heater quench test. So we, once again, we prepare uh, two samples and, and also change the uh, vary the applied magnetic field. So again, threshold for the protection is between here. So you can see here is the protectable current is about 160 or 168 amps. So uh, in both this quenched by transient uh, disturbance and thermal runway, around 160 or 70 is a threshold, and one thermal runway occur above this barrier, we cannot protect the magnet, but below this barrier, so we can protect the magnet. So, uh, at first I'd like to explain, uh, I'd like to show you some comparison between the monofilament and multifilament coated conductor uh, from the viewpoint of the protection. So now we focus on the uh, copper-plated uh, multifilament, co multifilament coated conductor 
which allowing current sharing among filaments. So this is uh, this type of the conductor. So this type of conductor, plated copper, allow the current sharing among filaments. So this is preferable from the viewpoint of the protection. So the, um, uh, in this series of experiments, uh, we apply some forces around here. This is actually a top view of the sample. Uh, we made some artificial local defect using the pin. So if we supply the current to the sample, maybe current could detour uh, this local defect. So um, this is a thermal runaway uh, experiment of the uh, monofilament coated conductor as a current and 190 amps. So current is kept at 190 amps for over, uh, over uh, 300 seconds, but no voltage appear. Uh, there's some voltage appear, but quite stable. So nothing happened. This is same in uh, mat filament coated conductor. But uh, interesting point is that this is a longitudinal voltage. This is a transverse voltage. Transverse voltage is the voltage across the 4 millimeter wide tape. So um, uh, actually, uh, I uh, forgot to explain. Uh, actually, we attach voltage tap to the sample and both sides, both, edge, both edges of the uh, 4 millimeter wide sample. So uh, combined with A1 and A2, for example, we can measure the longitudinal voltage, but we combine A1 and B1, we can measure the transverse voltage. So using the transverse voltage, we can get some information of the transverse current. So in other words, current deterring uh, the local defect. So when, uh, in malfilament coated conductor, we observe this transverse voltage. In other words, current is actually uh, detour the local disturbance. But anyway, in this case, uh, current detour local disturbance, uh, local defect, but and, uh, nothing happened. In other words, cooling suffers uh, this dual heating, and then, then Thermal runaway doesn't occur, didn't occur in this case. But the increase in current 205 amps, both in monofilament coated conductor and malfilament coated conductor, thermal runaway, and also in the malfilament coated conductor, thermal runaway a little bit earlier as compared to the monofilament coated conductor. This is because and uh, some additional due heating uh, by the deterring current of the local defect. Then again, uh, protectable current is com oh sorry, I maybe I skip this one. Uh, we compare uh, the protectable current of the monofilament coated conductor and malfilament coated conductor. Uh, you can see here uh, protectable current. This is a uh, once again something like the mid value. This white bar and red bar is almost same in the monofilament coated conductor and malfilament coated conductor. This is natural. Uh, in both coated conductor, thickness of copper is the same. Okay, so I'd like to bring uh, my conclusion. Both spot temperature are governed by the copper current density, not by critical current density. If we carefully select uh, detection voltage and damp resistor, at least small coated conductor coil may be protected against thermal runaway by using the conventional protection scheme. And also copper plating allowing current sharing among filament is preferable in malfilament coated conductor from the viewpoint profession. So that's uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for attention. Professor Amamiya, thank you for, for your talk. This is Ibrahim Belani from from Bolu. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I I have a question for. Um, Initiating quench or thermal runaway by a heater does really represent or mimic real situation. Just a moment, I like to increase the volume. Your voice is a little bit small. Can, Wait a moment. Could were you able to hear me? Ah, yes, I'm uh, getting better. Yes, please. 
Shall I repeat yes, the question? Yes, continue. Yeah. Would you like to repeat the question? I can hear now. Okay. Um, initiating quench or thermal runaway yes. by a heater does really... No, and, uh, we conducted two types of experiment. One experiment using the, uh, some transient heater, you know, you know and uh, another type of experiment, we make some artificial defect of the sample. By bending, you mean? A bend, uh, for example, in, uh, in this case, we made some, using uh, some pin, and then push it before the experiment, so degraded this part. This is somehow simulating some local defect uh, in the manufacturing process. Um. As you know, it's a... Uh, and uh, current transport or, or the uh, critical current or the uh, characteristic of the coated conductor is unfortunately uh, not very uniform. Does it really represent real situations in the, in the coated conductors or in other uh, conductors or superconductors? Sorry, I cannot hear. Does artificially in induced? Um, no, 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 no. Artificial defect, defect. Okay. Okay, I'm on just other. degrade the critical current density around there. I have a question. Uh, which yeah. kind of superconductor did you use? Uh, this is a commercial con uh, coated conductor provided by uh, Superpower. It's a coated conductor. Players one to three. Okay. 